Hi Lee, Michael from BBC Wales. How you doing? Um, sorry to kick off this one. <laughs> okay. Um, what have you made of them so far this season? Yeah, I think they've been excellent. Um, obviously, I've known Coops for quite a while since we was on a elite leadership course together a few years back and he's making us all look fools isn't he uh, one month in the job and gets manager of the month so uh, now I'm, I'm happy because I think it's a it's a, another statement if you like of intent for young British managers and uh, he's gone down a slightly different route by going through the almost like the educational coaching system through the FA and um found himself having having got a fantastic job and I think it's a, a good appointment, a shrewd appointment by the Swansea board and it'll be interesting to see whether or not that can continue but um, first signs are extremely good and uh, obviously he's got the team playing well, playing the Swansea way if you like but with his own spin on it and a very difficult game for us but one that we're really looking forward to. Kind of a kindred spirit to you, young manager, style of football, playing the right way and aspirations obviously of, of managing higher yeah absolutely and uh, I think there's a few now you know in that category and um, I think it's a great league like as I've learned a lot and he's going to learn um, so much from playing against the foreign managers that are in the division and uh, the different problems and the different influences that they bring um, culturally but also in their football styles and uh been fascinating really and I think probably the best league in the world as a young coach to competitively have to learn and have to find those little one percents that make the difference to get wins and uh, yeah it'd be interesting chatting to him after the game before the game and uh, get his take on on the intensity of management and uh, how it's very different to probably the previous job roles he's had. Playing obviously coming up to a game with Swansea there's maybe no one who knows that football club better than Ashley Williams, yeah. uh, we've obviously come here to see him today. Yeah. How, how, first of all, what kind of attracted you to, to sign in Ashley Williams? Because you've a very yeah. young squad. Yeah, I think first and foremost his quality as a footballer and as a man. Um, I remember obviously playing against him when he was at, in, the, in the Swansea Rise, if you like, and uh, he was a massive part of that. And uh, this club is very fortunate to be able to have a player of Ashley's quality. I think it coincides where it fits perfectly for both parties and um, obviously with him being out of contract wanting to extend his playing career and his international career, um, it was a nice little fit. We've got players that complement his playing style and he certainly complements the players that we've got both in terms of his technical quality but also his composure and his experience. So yeah, I've been really pleased with him so far. Like, I think that he's got two or three years left in him, I really do. There's a couple of things that, like, he's still got a good growth mindset, which is important, and he's taken on board two or three things that uh, I've tried to implement in the in the way he goes about certain areas of his game. And, yeah, he's been good to work with, not sort of over the top, but that sort of quiet leader uh, that can influence others around him and, and really um, make good decisions to make everybody else around him feel comfortable. And he's obviously aiming to get back into the international setup. Would you? Back him to succeed in that yeah, absolutely. I think, uh, like, um, I think I heard that you spoke to a little bit about uh, the sort of the, the good nick that he's in in terms of his body, his physical power is uh, is up there with the best in our squad, and obviously he's got that experience of whatever it is, 88 caps for Wales. Um, so therefore, it becomes about maintaining the the legs, if you like. And uh, I think, like I say, there's nothing that I've seen that I've thought as a red flag so that he's, he's anywhere near finishing. So um, I think he's enjoyed it here so far and we've certainly enjoyed having him. Final one for me. He's only obviously contracted on a short-term deal. If things continue as they have been, is that something you look to maybe extend? Yeah, I, I don't think that we're going into it with a short-term mindset. Obviously, you've got to protect yourself in terms of like that... Um, age bracket if you like no matter who that is and I think the club's wise to do that but you never go into like a signing or I don't as a manager thinking about solely short term gains you know it's about the development of the club the development of the individual hopefully it'll be here for years to come and, and whether that sort of moves into the coaching as well you know what I mean nothing's off the table so um, I think that the more quality people and footballers and men that we can bring into the place um, even better.
Thank you. Thank you. How's the squad looking for Saturday, Lee? Mike Callas, Wright, or Adam Nagy return at all? Um, well, Bailey Wright has been has trained, um, so Bailey Wright uh, has had sort of two or three days training. Obviously, we've got to get the balance right with that. Um, Adam, we we will probably test Friday. Um, it hasn't been out yet. We've just been like I said, it was annoying. Really, he comes back from. Hungry. I wasn't happy with that situation at all. Um, but it is what it is, you know. Like international takes precedent, and uh, even though we we pay the wages and everything, it's a it's a classic argument, isn't it? And uh, they got him ready, or tried to get him ready for a sort of cup final type mentality in a very big game, and it didn't work out well for us. And uh, of course, I'm not happy about that, but something that you've got. To, uh, bite the bullet really and uh, deal with it but yeah he's still a little bit thick around the ankle in terms of the swelling um, but he is on the mend and uh, we are hopeful that he'll be uh, ready soon Yeah do you speak with the Hungarian FA at all do you, have you spoken to Marco Rossi or, or um, it, it mainly works through uh, you do sometimes you do like I spoke to the um, the French and the 19s manager uh, with Hanna Masengo about various things um, but on this occasion, it was more sort of uh, physio department to, to their medical department out there. And uh, like I say, probably wise that I didn't speak to any managers on that occasion. Uh, Thomas Callas, is he close or is he...? Um, no, it's going to be a bit longer, Thomas. Like, you don't want to rush that one, you know, he's very powerful. Um, I think he's getting re-scanned maybe tomorrow, I think, um, just as an update really to see whether the tear has actually uh, decreased which it should have done by now Okay, um, Masengo's obviously stepped into the, the boys in midfield and doing very well, could you give us an insight on how he's doing, um, um, maybe away from the pitch even, how's, how's he yeah. setting into life around Bristol? Yeah, I absolutely love him, I think he's the, like if I could build a person and a footballer that loves football and, do you know what I mean, sole focus is to improve and get better and um sort of enjoys football wise doing it you know he epitomises that absolutely perfectly and uh, I think he's been excellent I think he's been really brave you know even against Stoke like alright maybe it wasn't his absolute um, the best performance in terms of what he's shown before but he never hid got on every ball moved the ball quickly um, everything he tried to do um, was for the good of the team and uh, that's what I like about him I think he's going to go if he keeps the current path and attitude, just turned 18, I haven't seen many better, to be honest, and it's a, it's a joy to uh, to work with him on a daily basis. Fam scored at the weekend then, so you've got a decision looming, I guess, with um, Benek Fobe available this weekend? I think we've got a lot of um, decisions, actually. I think that, you know, Callum signed his new contract now. I think that changes the mindset a little bit um, for me, certainly. He's committed, so I'm delighted with that one. The likes of Sammy Smodic and Pereira have been excellent um, in training. So, uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of decisions to be made uh, this weekend, but like always, it'll always be any decision that's made will be for the good of winning this particular game. And uh, I think the nice thing at the moment is the competition is strong. Um, there's not too much competition, probably due to the injuries we've got, but at the same time, like in training, like people have been for performing very, very well, and uh, the lads that are playing know that they can't um, sort of rest on their laurels if they like because someone else is chomping at the bit to get a start. So you're more likely to play Callum now because he's signed a new deal. Well, uh, look, I, the big thing for me is always like is always that sort of trust element, you know, and like the mindset of the individual at the time. I wouldn't not play Callum because he hasn't signed his contract because he was still under contract. But you're always looking for those little signs of like of commitment, of attitude, do you know what I mean? Like, and if it's 50-50, often you go with somebody that you feel if they make a mistake, it's, it's an honest, genuine mistake. So I'm not saying that Callum hasn't played because of that, but it's a different dynamic now. Now he's committed to the club and, uh, and hasn't got that sort of roving eye, if you like. <laughs> How are you keeping those guys fit and um, fit? Because I think the under twenty three side that went up to Sheffield the other day looked a fairly young side. So, mm. do you have any behind the closed doors games lined up or anything like that? Or? Yeah, they're fit. They're fit. I wouldn't have any. I mean, obviously, 
Callum, for example, had gone away and had an international game with Ireland. Um, like Smodic, uh, same with Pereira, who went away with Portugal and, and played some minutes for them. Um, Smodic is fit as a fiddle anyway. Do you know what I mean? So Watkins is, is fit as anything. So, like, we do a lot. We make sure that, um, like, statistically, they've hit their markers, whether they play or they don't play. So there's a consistency that when somebody comes in, it's probably only an intensity thing rather than a lung capacity. Just finally for myself, um, having had a chance to ask your reaction about Joe Morrell um, earning his first Wales cap. Yeah. Um, how, how do you see that? Because obviously he's, he's doing very well at Lincoln at the moment. Do you think he might be affected by the Cowley brothers moving on there and, and maybe longer term? I'm going to guess you've got a tough decision there to make. What do you mean, longer term? In terms of giving him first team football and that. So oh, no, I think, I think the pathway is there for Joe, you know, I think... Um, I like him. He's a really good player. I think it was well documented that at one point it looked like he might not have had a career, you know. So like we we extended him really to because we want it was desperate for it to come. No one would give him the opportunity, and, and we asked Cheltenham really to take him because we believed that once he got in the door, uh, he would get in the team and then not be left out. And that's what happened. He then came on. In first team games at Bristol City, played well. Caught a little bit last year, just with the whole number situation. You know, you've got to uh, have enough in the squad. And I actually think that he would have been a bit frustrated that he didn't get more games. But I think subliminally, subconsciously, it would be good for him because by training at that intensity, sort of every day, you're still learning. Um, and it's, it's sort of fueling the fire, if you like, to make sure that when you do play, whether it be Bristol City or somewhere else, that you're at it and, and you're up with that sort of elite standard. So, yeah, he's gone to Lincoln. I know they haven't been in great form. I think they've lost six out of seven and maybe one draw. Um, and, and the Cowley brothers have moved on. But um, Jamie McComb obviously, has taken charge there um, on a caretaker basis. And uh, I'm in regular contact with him, mainly because he's a mate, but also because... Uh, interested to see how Joe's doing, and, and we watch all his clips, and, and I mean he's he's never far away from our thought process at all. Delighted for him with the with the Wales call up and the recognition of that, and um, like I say, from two or three years ago where it was I think he was probably going to go out to America and, and enter the college scene. Um, it's amazing that he's now um, played for his country in a big game. So have you got questions? Uh, yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so Stoke last weekend was uh, always going to be potentially tricky. Are you, are you happy with the way the team responded after going and goal down early on? Yeah, I was very pleased um, with the second half. Like I was, I thought, like on review as well. Sometimes when you know the score <laughs> and you're not in the moment and having to deal with the emotion of the moment, it's actually a better performance uh, when you look back on it. I thought we'd cope with the extra man really well. well I, I'll be honest, I think Stoke... Like their squad's up there with, with the best in the league. I think they're in the individuals that they've got. So I, I knew that was going to be a difficult game. They've been playing pretty well, and it's uh, almost like sorcery how they've only got uh, one point so far from the season. Um, but they're a good side. So for us to um, really start as poorly as we did, but then to turn it round and, and come out of a win at a place like that. Um, particularly when they had something to hold on to, you know, because like good players and good experience that they've got was something to hold on to. With the inexperience that we had, pretty much uh, in that in that eleven at, at certain points, away from home was uh, excellent. And um, <clears throat> with Swansea coming up this weekend, obviously, depending on other results, there is the opportunity to get the top of the table. Does that mean anything to you at this stage in the season, or, or not really? Um, yeah, I think it's early days. You know, like you're not really thinking like that. Like there's 117 points, if my maths are correct, to play for, and uh, we want to fight for every one of those. You know, so this will be no different. I don't think we're going to win or lose anything uh, in this game, apart from the the points that are on offer. So, um, yeah, I think that it's nice. Yeah. But at the same time. Um, long way to go, sure. and, uh, and one, one last question. That's all right. Um, how are the how how are you happy with like the football being played this year? There's obviously a lot of new players come in, and the results on the pitch are looking great. What, what's your personal perspective on how the squad are gelling together? Yeah, I'm enjoying the lads. Definitely, I'm enjoying like every game. We seem to evolve and layer on something else that we've been working on during the week. 
and obviously it's nice to to be working with good students and good professionals you know I've been so impressed considering the key injuries we've had and it seems like uh, every time we go sort of two steps forward one step back where we have a big blitz and injury um, that we've got to deal with so uh, key players out new players coming in like very very strong and, uh, and and found a way to win now have we hit top style yet I don't think we have um, and I think there's more to come from within the group um, and we keep building we keep building the momentum we keep building the performance and uh, keep building that cohesion so yeah I've been very pleased with the players their application their focus and uh, Oh, you had a question about Tammy Abram. Yeah, yeah that's all right, Lee. It's Tom from the Telegraph. Hey, Dan. I was just going to ask a bit about Tammy. You talked actually about us working with good students, and you said yeah. had one there. I just wondered if you could give a bit of an insight into how, how you helped him kick on in his, in his amazing career that he's got ahead of him, and yeah. also just to say, sort of any, any insights from the training ground that you just really felt that he, he had with it? Too? Yeah, I think, well, first and foremost, you're looking at a player. And, and watching his path, I'm still in touch with, with Tammy, so like we had a good personal relationship, which is obviously key. I really like him as a lad, and I think that's important because it's very easy uh, to sort of be blinded by the lights and the riches that come with uh, being a, a super talent, if you like, at a young age. I think the thing that stood out for me was just the unbelievable ability to find space in the box when there was none. <laughs> whether that's one of those big long toes that uh, pop out and poke it in or whether he's using the airspace to direct a header. Um, and I always, even in training, it was everybody was moving away from the goal as he was moving towards it. And you're thinking, like it was many a time where I'm, I'm watching the game and I'm thinking, go on, like get a move on, get in the box. And he's like holding his run, holding his run, and then he's tucked it in and I've had to sort of go to myself, all right, and maybe he's a better striker than me. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think he's got that natural instinct, which is not just natural. You know, you're a byproduct of your environment and uh, like the coaching sessions that he's had throughout the years and the good coaches, the good players he's played with. I'm delighted to see him doing really well. I, I did say I, that I thought he would score goals in the Chelsea side, particularly a good side that can that can handle the ball and create opportunities. In one sense. He's going to be a better player in a top Premier League side than he is maybe in his time at Swansea, where he's spending sort of seventy percent of the time defending. Defending is not his unbelievable strong point. It's got a lot better as he's become more experienced. But it's nice to see the development physically. Obviously, he's a tall lad anyway, um, but had to grow into his body a little bit. And now you can see that sort of extra half a yard in sharpness, in his speed, in his mobility. He's always been confident got a good family around him that sort of keep him grounded and um, like I say he's a nice lad I thought it was disgusting some of the stuff um, that was that was sort of posted on social media but at the same time I think like he's very strong personality and uh, I think that in one sense uh, that feeling to sort of prove the doubt is wrong or to sort of um, throw it back in the face of the haters if you like will just spur him on to score more goals for Chelsea. He's obviously Really loved down here, and um, did did you see it as a, a as quite a coming of age year for him? It, there was there was there was that strange thing with the driving stuff, and but but yeah, he he, he was always so mature in in, in press conferences. And yeah, absolutely. I mean, like I say, starting point is is a fantastic lad, but I think in any season, like it was a tough season for us that season. You know, that was where we had the bad spell, and um, he went on a bad run, and and he and he stayed consistent. Like I felt as a manager he was fighting for me, which doesn't always happen. 18-year-old kid, does he really care whether Lee Johnson's the manager or not? He did. Do you know what I mean? So that, I think, as well as a sign of his maturity, but also um, his sort of moral compass, if you like. And uh, um, the work that we've done uh, in training, he was always sort of um, first out, last in. He loved finishing and uh, took in everything that we asked him to do. So hopefully one day I'll work with him again. Yeah, Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you.